welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam, thanks for uh, watching the video today. Today I wanna to talk about um, this. This is a Squire Bullet Strat. Um, I get asked a lot of times by parents of my of students I've had or um, just in general, um, people asking the question, is this thing any good? Um, and the reason they ask that question is because maybe it's their first guitar or uh, first electric guitar or their kid's first guitar, maybe they want a Christmas present or whatever, and they are asking um, because the price is pretty good. I think these are like 170 bucks, maybe less, way less, um, if you get them on Reverb or eBay or something. Um, but they're pretty affordable. And so people want to know, like, okay, so can it be that good if it's that cheap? And that's a great question. It's valid. <laughs> to that usually is it depends. Um, it depends on what you're looking to get out of it, what you're looking to do with it. It depends on what you're hoping um, it's going to sound like. Here's what I've found. Oh, I've been playing guitar 30-ish years. And what I um, have come to conclude about these kind of guitars, budget-friendly kind of guitars, is a couple things. The first one, the first thing that I've concluded is that beginner usually is more about the player than it is about the instrument. So you can take a um, entry level priced guitar, put it in the hands of somebody who's been playing for a very long time, and it's gonna sound good. Why? Because the guitar player is good. Um, and tone, um, I, I think 90% of your tone is right here and right here. <laughs> um, the rest, and right here. Uh, the rest of it is very nuanced with pickup configurations, with, um, you know, materials, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for tone, the answer to that, and you're looking for, oh, is this going to make me a better player? Tone, maybe a little bit better player, this instrument. Um, will not make you a better player. Practice makes you a better player. But there are a few things that when you think about these kind of instruments that, um, that we want to be aware of, okay? So um, one of the things that I usually tell parents or even younger students or beginner students is that if you're going to buy an affordable guitar, know what you're getting yourself into um, because there are going to be some things that may be frustrating for you. Um, so I, I was gifted this guitar. This is a, let me see the serial number. I think this is a 2014 Squire Bullet. They don't even make them like this anymore because this was made back when they have the trem system in the bullet strats. Um, they don't make them like that anymore. They um, only have hardtail bullet strats now. Um, so this is a little older, but I think the, I think it, the premise is about the same, okay? so. Um, the first thing you're going to notice if you were to hold this up next to even the next level up, the Affinity Squires, or the next level above that, the um, it used to be the Deluxe, they don't make that anymore. Now it's the, the, custa, the classic vibe stuff. Um, what you'll know, Im notice immediately is the weight. The weight on this is significantly less than the weight on the Affinity stuff. And it's significantly less than the weight on the classic vibe stuff. Um, and then you get to the fender stuff, and the fender stuff feels even, you know, heavier. The reason is because of the, the type of wood they're making it out of. Plus, the profile is skinnier. It's skinnier than a, a normal Stratocaster. It's, I, don't, I didn't do any measurements to try to figure that out. You can find that out. All, there's all kinds of videos about that. But it's, it is thinner through here, um, and it is a lot lighter. And so that's going to affect some things. It's going to affect resonance. Um, it's going to affect um, sustain. So just know, you got to know that. Another thing that you'll want to know about these type of guitars is they usually come with really cheap um, tuning machines. And this can be, it, it saves a lot of money so you don't have to, to um, spend so much. But here's the frustrating part. The frustrating part is that it, it struggles to hold tune. Um, 
And guitars with tremolo systems struggle to whole tune anyway, but this one especially, like I tuned it probably four times during that opening jam, um, just because these are super cheap. And it's a it's an easy fix, it's an expensive fix sometimes, they can be up, up around 70, 80 bucks to fix them the right way, but um, yeah. So then you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to buy a cheap guitar and then upgrade it with a lot of expensive parts? So, um, but you gotta know that going into it. If you're gonna buy a cheaper guitar, they're usually gonna have some cheaper tuning machines uh, on them, so just heads up. Another thing to know that they're gonna have usually a plastic nut. Um, and that nut may or may not be cut well. When I first got this guitar, like I said, this was gifted to me. Um, the nut was, um, had all kinds of burrs because this is a cheap, cheap guitar, you know, processed through a line made by a bunch of machines. And a lot of times it's not really detailed in, you know, and so the nut comes and it's, you know, it, it's bind, the string is binding up in there. You try to change strings and it, like it's sticking. That's bad news because it, it want, everything needs to be kind of flowing, you know, well. And so the cheaper the nut, the easier it is that things are gonna bind in it. And that just needs to be taken care of. So you just need to know that. So um, if your guitar won't stay in tune, it may be the tuners, it might be the nut. Um, and because it's cheaper, it might be just a cheap nut. So there are easy fixes for this, but it can get, you know, the more you fix this guitar up, the more expensive it can actually get, and you might as well have bought, you know, one above it. Um, another thing to know about affordable guitars is a lot of times the frets um, are not dressed very well. They're not, um, you know, they haven't taken the time to really make sure there's no sharp ends on them. Well, this one, one of the reasons, you know, when I was when it was given to me, one of the reasons I never played it was because it was so sharp on the fret ends that it just hurt my hands. And I would get done playing it and my hands would be all raw and like not cut, but just kind of scratched and scraped up. And so I just stopped playing it. I was like, I don't even want to play that because that's what it feels like after you get done playing it. I finally got fed up and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get a file out. I got a file out and I filed down all the fret ends here. Um, I made sure I crown, got them all rounded off on the sides, and now it plays, whoo, it plays great. You know, my hands aren't messed up after it. It actually feels really good. The problem is a lot of beginners um, and a lot of parents of beginners who buy these guitars for their kids don't know how to do that, and to take it into a luthier to get that done can be expensive. So, you know, if you're going to get a you know, guitar like this that's not expensive, but then you're gonna start doing all this stuff to it to get it up to where it could be a great playing guitar. If you don't know what you're doing at home, it could be very expensive. So you just have to know that going in. Um, I could easily probably put uh, $200, $300 into this guitar, and I would be like, this is an amazing guitar. Oh my gosh, all over the place. But that kind of defeats the purpose of buying a $160 guitar. Right, where you could have spent $500 and bought a Fender guitar, or $500 and bought the top of the line Squire, you know, Stratocaster. So the question, should I buy a bullet Stratocaster? Um, my answer is if you are looking for a guitar to learn on, bullet Stratocaster is, is a good way to go. I mean, um, you're gonna wanna do a few things. So here's, here's my tips on what to do if you ever buy a bullet Stratocaster from um, Squire. First things first, get a pencil and get some pencil lead like shavings and go up here or take just a pencil and go up here into each one of these slots and just draw on it with a pencil lead or put pencil lead shavings in there. 
it'll will lubricate this and will make it so that it won't stick and it won't bind, um, the strings won't bind, so you'll stay in tune better. Do that immediately. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your string height is not too high off of uh, your action of your strings isn't too high off of your fretboard. And so um, what you wanna do, there's two different things to look at. There is what's called neck relief and there's what's called um, your, your string action, which is right here on the bridge. First thing first, neck relief. Um, take your first finger, put it up here on the top E string there, and then you wanna put your last finger here on the last, your pinky finger right here on the last fret. And then you, what you wanna do is you wanna see the space that's in between on the 12th fret. There should be a little tiny bit. You should be able to get um, thinner than a pick through there. If it's a lot of space, when you do that and you can really like bounce your finger up and down on that string, then that means your neck is bowing like this. If there's no space, that means you've got a back bow in your neck. Either of those two things are gonna be frustrating for a guitar player. Back bow in the neck means there's gonna be fret buzz all over the place. Um, regular bow in the neck means that there's, it's gonna be harder to press down and harder to play chords up and down the neck and strings up and down the neck. So what you'll, what you'll do is that you should, you should get an Allen wrench that goes up here, there's a little hole right there and there's what's called the truss rod in there. And if your neck is bowed too far this way, you'll wanna take it and loosen it. You'll feel it loosen or tighten. Okay, and do quarter turns, small turns. Don't do big turns, You'll, you could crack the neck, you could do all kinds of stuff, you don't wanna do that. So it's little small turns, either loosen it to give more relief or tighten it to take that relief and straighten out the neck. But what you want at the end of when you're doing it is you want to have um, a very small amount of relief right there, a little balance right there on your string. Um, and that'll help with your strings, the height of your strings on the neck and playability. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna get out um, some kind of a small ruler that has millimeters or inches, I use millimeters, and you want to put that on the 12th fret and you wanna measure the distance between the, the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And I like to have about a millimeter and a half on the bass side and a millimeter on the, um, on the treble side, the small side. And in order to get that, to do that, you will use the other Allen wrench that you should get with your guitar and you put them inside of each one of these little tiny, there's two Allen screws right on each one of these um, saddles. And you'll wanna do that for each um, one of these strings. Yeah, that's my, my, uh, my thoughts on the Bullet Strat. Um, it's a good guitar. Um, I, use, I use this guitar mainly for any of my harder rock songs that I need a Stratocaster style with a whammy bar with, um, uh, humbucker in the bridge. That's what I use this guitar for. Um, and that's primarily it, but, and I still use it. So there you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, comment below and, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.